This video was made possible by Gamersgate.com. Download games anytime, anywhere. Skip it up and data. Uh, my favorite topic: Are consoles dying? I hate talking about this because when I give my honest opinion, it makes people very angry. It's a very touchy subject. It's like talking about. It's like the equivalent of talking about religion or politics when it comes to tech. It just stirs up a lot of emotion, but. I'm not going to change my mind on it just to appease people and be like, oh yeah, consoles are going to be here forever. It's just anyone who says differently is an idiot. I know it's what some people want to hear. Not all of you, but I know there's a good chunk out there that want to hear that, but it's not how I feel. But anyway, I saw a video by David DeFranco, who I'm a big fan of. I like the guy a lot. I'll have a link to his channel below. And he saw a video... <laughs> This guy saw this guy's video, and this guy saw this guy's video, but anyway, he saw a video where Chris Perillo was talking to Linus from Linus Tech Tips. I know a lot of you guys know him, and Linus feels that consoles are going to go away in the next generation. We're going to have you know, smart TVs integrated with hardware to do gaming, and our cell phones are going to be powerful enough to compete with the consoles, and so on and so forth. It's kind of the same stuff I've been saying. And this was David DeFranco's rebuttal to that. And then I'll give my opinion on what David DeFranco says after he talks. So take a listen to David DeFranco for a second. I'm very, very confident in saying that we will have new video game consoles to keep us gamers busy. For one main reason, Chris and Linus were talking about this in regards to mobile games and how they're taking over because games like Angry Birds and whatever are so popular on devices such as the iPhone, iPod Touch, iPad, Android devices, Windows Phone devices, and even some BlackBerry devices here and there. But does that mean video game consoles are suddenly on their way out because there's something new in town and something more convenient for the casual gamers? No, of course not, guys. It's all about immersion. Oh, with the Angry Birds, I'm so tired of that cliche rebuttal. First off, I just watched their whole video. Never once did they mention Angry Birds. And secondly, they're not talking about the casual market, David. They're saying that whether it be just a set-top box that's going to stream from the cloud, I mean, OnLive was way too early for its time. In the future, they're talking about or you having a diesel cell phone with an 8-core processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a GPU equivalent to like a GTX 760, they're saying that you're going to have some very portable, powerful device that you're going to plop either on a docking station or hook directly to your TV, sit down with the controller, and you're going to, via, via Bluetooth, wireless Bluetooth, plop your nutsack on a couch and play a game like Titanfall, a triple A game, not watered down to be in a mobile device. The device is going to be powerful enough to give you a console experience, and you're just going to have this one device that does everything. That's what they're saying. They're not saying that, you know, Angry Birds and these, you know, cheap crap portable games are what the future is. They're saying that device, there's not going to be no need for just a dedicated console. Your phone, your tablet, your whatever is going to be powerful enough to also deliver these AAA experiences. And you're going to game that way. Forget the touch screen. You're not even going to need, you're just going to hook it up to your TV and you're going to navigate through menus just like you would on a... Xbox One or Xbox 360 or PS3 or PS4 and you're just going to sit down and play the game just like you would on a console. It's coming and that's what they're saying and you know what? I agree with them. This is what else he had to say. I love games on my iPad. I love games like Angry Birds, Cut the Rope, and even ports of PS2 titles like Grand Theft Auto 3 which has been available on the iPad for I think at least a year now. But if you try playing that on the iPad, it's nothing compared to the PlayStation 2 version. Playing games on a touchscreen is just that. Playing games on a touchscreen, you don't get tactile feedback, you don't get actual buttons, you don't get an actual joystick or control stick, whatever you want to call it. And the touchscreen again. Here we go. Actually, David, if you have a powerful enough tablet and a MOGA Pro controller, 
you can have the same exact experience you would have on a PS2 if you hook up your tablet via HDMI to your TV. I've done it before. I've played other games with the Moga Pro controller. I've actually reviewed that controller, and it was really damn good. Now imagine if somebody like Apple or Sony or someone comes out with this all-in-one device that just includes the controller so you know it'll work perfectly and be 100% compatible. You could definitely have that full experience that you keep talking about. There's no reason that you can't. It's it's just about the hardware. If the hardware is capable enough, you can have the experience, period. There's nothing magical about a console that, uh, uh, unfortunately, another device can't do. A tablet's a computer. A console's a computer. If a, co if a tablet or a smartphone has the horsepower to do it and you could hook it up to a TV, guess what? You're going to have that experience you're talking about that you keep saying that a, a tablet or another smart device can't give you. Yeah, right now they can't give that exact experience, but in the future, I promise you, it's coming, man. It's right around the corner, and I'm not the only one saying this. He continues. Games like Grand Theft Auto V, you will never, ever be able to replicate on something like an iPad. Ever. Mark my words. In 2020, view this video and tweet me if Twitter's still around. I guarantee you, you will never, ever get that kind of experience on a touchscreen. Oh, the touchscreen. Again, whatever. I've beaten that horse to death. But, David, why? Let me give you a real-world scenario, buddy, that's going to come in the future. You have an iPad that has 8 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, and a powerful GPU. Please explain to me why it couldn't run Grand Theft Auto V. Why? Because it's a tablet? It doesn't matter what the device looks like. It matters what kind of computing power it will have. And tablets in the future and smartphones in the future will have that kind of computing power. So why, David, couldn't they play Grand Theft Auto V? You didn't even explain your point. You were just like, oh, there's the touchscreen, so it can't. The touchscreen is a moot point. You don't even have to worry about it. You're going to have it hooked up via HDMI or some docking station to your TV, and you're going to sit down again on the couch with the controller. It's all about the computing power. If my ass cheek had an Intel Core i7 and a GTX 760, and they come out with a PC version of Grand Theft Auto V, my, you could play Grand Theft Auto V on my ass cheek. It doesn't matter what the device looks like or what shape it is if it has the computing power you're going to be able to play games on it and in the future tablets will have that kind of horsepower smartphones will have that kind of horsepower so yes let's get on twitter in the year 2020 and i guarantee you you will be wrong and we will see triple a games on small devices because they're going to have that horsepower Everyone's saying it. It's inevitable. The, the technology in smartphones and smart devices now is like quadrupling every year. It's progressing at lightning speed. It's going to get there. And I promise you by like halfway through this generation or maybe six years in, we're going to have tablets and smartphones that are more powerful and more gaming capable than the Xbox One and PS4. And they're saying they're going to be 10 year systems. So halfway through the life of these consoles, we're going to have portable devices that are going to, that are going to dwarf them when it comes to visuals and horsepower when it comes to gaming. Let me just say, Grand Theft Auto V set an entertainment record, not just the video game record, an entertainment record. They made so much freaking money. So if that says anything about the future of console gaming, well then, there you go. So if cell phones currently now, which they aren't yet, were capable of playing Grand Theft Auto V, the same way you play on consoles, once again, sitting comfortably on a couch with a controller in your hand, you're saying it wouldn't have sold on there? Again, what does it matter what you're playing it on as long as the piece of hardware is giving the experience that the consumer wants? Who cares what shape or what size it is as long as you're getting that AAA experience? That makes no sense, David. It's like, okay, if something's a different shape than a conventional console, even though it's capable of playing the game, it won't sell well because I don't like the way it looks on my desk. Again, they're just computers. If they could have the right amount of computing power and could give the right experience... It doesn't matter what it looks like. As long as you could game on it and game the way you want to, that's all that matters. So if Grand Theft Auto V could run easily on a cell phone or an iOS device or an Android device, tablet, whatever, people would have bought it. Come on, 
Look, first and foremost, I'm going to end this video like this. I'm a big fan of David DeFranco. Just because I don't agree with someone doesn't mean I don't like them. As a matter of fact, I suggest you subscribe to his channel. I'll have a link below in the description. Just because I'm a loudmouth and get impassioned about what I'm saying and have a differing opinion than you doesn't mean I don't like you. And even if someone has a differing opinion than me doesn't mean they don't like me. That's what the world's about. That's what having freedom is about, that you can express your own opinion. And secondly, look... I'm not wishing this on consoles. People take it that way. I have no, as long as I get a good gaming experience, I don't care how I get it. I've grown up with consoles. I've been gaming on consoles since the early 80s. I mean, why would I want them to go away? I'm not wishing for this. As a matter of fact, I hope that I'm wrong. But it's just, the writing is on the wall and it just seems this is the way things are going. I hope it doesn't go this way, but just because I'm a fan of something doesn't mean I'm going to be in denial and not see the writing on the wall. You get what I'm saying? Anyway, folks, this ended up being a huge video over 10 minutes long. Make sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for supporting Review Tech USA. Have a good one.